In Lincoln Park, New Jersey, local authorities said that a woman crashed her car into an electric pole after passing out from wearing an N95 mask for several hours. So the question becomes, is it dangerous to wear a mask for too long? The other day while driving down the road, I looked over and I saw an individual wearing a face mask while driving their car all alone. Not very much longer down the road, I saw an older gentleman who was riding his bike with a face mask on. And you know, I had to ask myself, is it healthy to wear a mask all day long, even while exercising? Now looking back at the lady who had crashed her car, the local authorities went on to post about it on Facebook and the post was shared wildly. People were concerned and you can see why. Now what the local authorities had said is that we don't know that the mask was the cause. We just know this with 100% certainty. She was wearing an N95 mask for several hours prior while operating her vehicle and then she passed out. This topic is particularly interesting to me because I have family members that are elderly and family members that also have respiratory conditions. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the science and see what could have potentially happened. The level of carbon dioxide would have to be pretty high in order to cause somebody to pass out. When we look at the concentration of the carbon dioxide in the atmosphere around us, it's about 0.4%. Now, when we look at the concentration of carbon dioxide that would be necessary in order to actually cause harm or potentially cause you to pass out, that would have to be reaching a level of 10%. This could happen. This could happen from holding your breath, or this could happen from wearing a face mask for an extended period of time and not getting enough fresh air into the lungs. When you have too much carbon dioxide in your system, some not so good changes start to occur in your body. The carbon dioxide is actually responsible for regulating the pH of your blood. So what happens is as the carbon dioxide goes up, your blood starts to become too acidic. And as your body realizes how acidic the blood is, it will cause you to pass out. Now, according to the science, this is a process known as hypercapnia. This is when your body's not getting enough fresh oxygen and also not getting rid of that CO2. It has many symptoms associated with it, and I think you should know what they are. Some of the mild symptoms are going to be flushed skin, drowsiness or inability to focus, mild headaches, feeling of disorientation or dizziness, feeling shortness of breath, or also being abnormally tired or exhausted. So let's take a look at some of the more severe symptoms associated with it. It can be confusion, it can be paranoia or depression, abnormal muscle twitching, irregular heartbeat, hyperventilation, even as much as seizures, panic attacks, or passing out. You should really know the symptoms associated with this decrease in oxygen and too much CO2 just in case something like this was to happen to you. Undoubtedly, the mass will restrict your airflow, but will it be enough to actually cause negative side effects like all the ones we just talked about? It seems that each different type of mask that we look at will restrict breathing differently, and what causes that more specifically is gonna be the filtration that it has to offer. For instance, an N95 mask will offer you about 95% filtration. This is because the pore sizes in it are about 0.3 microns. This is very small. So you're going to have to work pretty hard in order to breathe through the N95 mask versus if you were wearing nothing at all. If you were to wear a surgical mask, that offers you about 60 to 80% filtration. And then if you're wearing just a bandana of some sort, you're gonna get about five to 10% filtration with that. And I think that this is really important to point out as well. The size of the virus is estimated to be about 0.1 microns. Okay, that is incredibly small. So if you're really serious about protecting yourself, an N95 mask is gonna be the way to go. Whereas when you look at these other forms of masks, they don't really hold up in the way of scientific evidence when it comes to protecting you from a virus. That's a really important fact that I like to stress because those who are truly trying to protect themselves, those who maybe have a comorbidity, you're just not going to be doing yourself any justice when it comes to using a poor fitted cloth mask. There's not scientific evidence that says that that will protect you from any type of virus. Now on the flip side, another important fact to know is that breathing through the N95 mask material is going to impede gaseous exchange. Therefore, what it's going to do is put an additional workload on the metabolic system. When we look at these other masks, there's no evidence of them causing hypoxia because they just don't filter out enough in order to impede your breathing. This is most likely to happen to those who are already predisposed to a breathing condition. According to the evidence, some of them include this. Those who are smokers, people suffering with asthma, 
people who are obese, individuals with COPD, emphysema, or also women who are pregnant, okay? Important to note that. The other thing the research goes on to say is that the benefits of using N95 masks to prevent serious emerging infectious diseases should be weighed against potential respiratory consequences associated with extended N95 respirator usage. The best thing that we can do to protect ourselves from any new emerging virus or bacterial infection is to increase our baseline health and also boost our body's natural defense mechanisms, otherwise known as your immune system. System. If you want to learn more on how to boost your immune system today, watch this free mini series I put together right here. Trolled fever is actually good. A lot of times what people do is they get a fever and they try to kill it off. They'll try to just do anything they can do in order to make that fever go away. But the truth is you got to let the fever run its course.